a way, even though not, I don't think that many researchers think of preservation as the, the first thing <laughs> uh, when, uh, when they think of an, um, uh, designing a, a study. But if you think of, uh, well, that even for yourself, if you think, I, w I want to be able to find and reuse that data after a few years from now, uh, that's already a, a good goal to <laughs> put it to yourself. And by doing the right things uh, during your research process, would allow to not only well make it available for yourself but also for others. The, the value of preservation rises over time. Um, in, in real time, people feel like, oh, we don't really need to do preservation because I only want to make it available. I'm only interested in access. If you're interested in long-term access, the investment in producing these well-formed packages pays off again and again and again over time because you can go back to the archival package and represent it in any kind of technology that comes up. Long-term access to stuff is providing long-term access, providing preservation. That's communicating with the future. Right? That's essentially, essentially what it is. It's, it's being able to communicate with people after we're gone. And I think that uh, the, the scholarly record, that the scientific evidence base is uh, an important enough thing that, uh, that the future will want to know about it. It's very important to be part of the process where if people need or want information, records, data, that they can get it and that we can be part of that. We can do it well, we can do it better than we could before, we can incorporate technologies into doing it better and making things more and more accessible to um, whoever is interested. And I think that part of that has to do with as we get into open access data, it means that it's not necessarily a very um, focused, um, constrained set of researchers, it's anybody who wants to know more about that thing. And I really like the notion of open access to anyone who's interested in it. Well, archiving data is at the core of sharing data effectively. Um, it places the data in a central repository where researchers all over the world can gain access to it. It provides a legacy to that data as software changes or technologies change. Um, archives can preserve data and make it accessible um, beyond those changes in, in technology. Um, it really provides a much more robust way of sharing data and, and recording and documenting what it is we do as we uh, advance our scientific communities. So archiving is absolutely essential. Um, it's a living, breathing way to, to make the scientific enterprise open to everyone who wants to participate in the scientific enterprise. If any of the items that are in digital form will be needed in the future, they have to start managing integrity. You cannot trust any disk drive, you can't trust any vendor. Eventually, this technology will either fail or become obsolete. So you need a way to migrate your data from the prior type of storage to the next cheaper type of storage that's coming in the future. I, I teach students when, in, in just my epi, epidemiology courses because I'll have a session on data management and part of that is where you're going to archive data. And I, I tell war stories from a, a national data collection in Australia that was archived on five and a quarter inch floppy disks. Now, I'll leave it to you to explain to the audience what a five and a quarter inch floppy disk is because I expect most people who might watch this video would have no idea what I'm talking about. But it's a magnetic medium that you would have to feed into a, a drive into an old desktop computer and it would have a whirring machine that would read this disk. And, and you cannot find um, devices to read those disks anymore. And that was the repository for um, a national data collection of oral health. And I've spoken to colleagues who have magnetic tapes that had to be scraped because of, they got oxidised and they would scrape the tapes and those are bits of metal coming off it, magnetic stuff coming off a tape that hopefully it's oxidisation, not data, right? But that's their scraping tape. So the good people you work with realise that in, certainly in 20 years now and certainly in 50 years to 
now. People will be doing the equivalent of scraping data clouds that we now regard as being permanent. And, and it's fun to work with people like that who have that vision because they are, they are creating something for the future and they realise the future is more than just a, a thumb drive or a, or a cloud.